Hello and welcome back to another guide. My name is Saik and today we're going to answer the question what are the best weapons in Phoenix Point. This concise no BS no repetition guide will answer that question in 10 minutes and arm you with everything you need to know about uh, the game. In a game like Phoenix Point where the advancement is horizontal and not vertical, meaning most of the weapons become side grades, it is even more important to understand which are the outstanding weapons to give you the edge in combat that you need. I will go class by class and review all of uh, the best weapons in slot in my opinion, give you a reasoning for it and then give some honorable mentions as well. We are starting with the Assault, the Bread and Butter class for every squad. It is uh, proficient with Assault Rifles and Shotguns. So well, let's look at the Assault Rifles, which generally are medium uh, range, medium damage, multi-shot weapons. My personal favorite for Assault Rifles is the Deimos ARL, which is the Sinidran version of it. It packs high damage, has the by far highest precision of the weapon category and is usable in medium to long range. The reason why I prefer that over all of the other assault rifles is because typically in the kit of an assault you do have a shotgun for a shorter range distance and the assault rifle really needs to bridge the gap until you actually get there. Moving on to shotgun. Um, in my perspective, there are two shotguns that are worth mentioning. Number one, the Heroa, which is the Disciples of a New shotgun, mainly because it has it packs a quite a bit of punch, but it also has a nice shred, one of the few shotguns that can shred. And with so many projectiles, you can actually melt the armor of the enemies fantastically well. Of course, only second to the Shard Gun, which is the ancient uh, tech shotgun, much more damage overall with a massive burst of 375 points of damage in close range unlimited ammunition and good piercing it has to bow a bow for no one other than itself honorable mentions in my perspective are the bulldog which is an assault rifle from new jericho a little bit less accuracy but decent shredding potential if you're lacking shredding in your group it might be a good way of um, upgrading that other than the mentioned uh, assault rifles and shotguns the weapon tier is okay but uh, most of them are actual downgrades compared to what i mentioned moving on to the heavy who is um, equipped with heavy weapons, mounted weapons and grenade launchers. The heavy in itself is not only an excellent scout, but also a great front line. It is uh, as soon as uh, they close uh, the gap and start being able to hit with their weapons, they deal a destructive amount of damage. So for the heavy in the heavy cannon slot, I am preferring to go with the Deceptor MG. It has a high shredding potential, 420 damage and a moderate shred. As soon as you are in that kind of close combat area, it can really lay down the hate. Uh, specifically good if you can reduce uh, the action economy cost and it is very, very reliable. It's not a full hit or miss. For mounts, I would recommend to go with the Fury 2, which is the New Jericho missile launcher. By far the most action economy efficient way of dealing damage with mounts. Costs only one action point, decent range, decent blast and really good shred. It also contributes very well to the otherwise poor action economy of the heavies. Uh, you can theoretically jet a pack in and use the missile launcher afterwards or vice versa in a different uh, order. And finally, moving on to the grenade launcher, my favorite category. By far the best grenade launcher is Rebuke, which is the ancient tech grenade launcher. 425 uh, of the protein mutane you get an unlimited ammunition grenade launcher that if you can reduce uh, the action cost is just going to obliterate everything in its path. For the honorable mentions, aka also okay weapons, 
I would point out the Hell 2 cannon, which is the Phoenix cannon that allows specifically on lower armored and lower hit point uh, targets to nicely hit and uh, stun the target, therefore removing its action economy. And secondly, the Goliath uh, grenade launcher, which has a decent ammo um, capacity of eight and on top of that good range and decent damage it is quite costly to produce the ammo so once you are using it might as well use the entirety of the magazine let's move on moving on to the berserker who is proficient with melee weapon and handguns the class itself might uh, lack the ability to use other weapons outside of melee but melee damage is strong. It is actually very strong. The two best weapons in that, um, without a shadow of a doubt, number one would be the Scyther. Massive amount of damage, AoE attack, even slightly longer reach in melee, and just all around, in my perspective, the single best weapon in uh, the game, if you can make it work. Followed by the Ancient of uh, Medoc of the Ancients, which is the other large melee upgrade for only 50 Eurocalcum. Very obtainable once you can actually create it. A massive power upgrade, and it uh, certainly makes fearsome melee combatants. For handguns, it looks a bit different. There are no perfect handguns, they all are okay. Um, for one action point but what are you expecting if you're running around with literal laser weapons elsewise the best out of a bunch is Hephaestus the second which is the Sinhydran weapon which has a moderate accuracy and really the Berserker struggles mostly to close the distance so whenever that's not possible you want something that is more or less reliably hitting might as well cover a special sort of weapons as we're talking about handguns and melee which are the neural weapons they certainly deserve a special slot and i'll just put them under the berserker weapons but they can be used by other classes as well the hera np1 neural pistol as well as the neurizer can be used by almost all of the classes even if they're not proficient they are absolutely fantastic and great ways of dealing with enemies as Paralyze not only reduces the actions uh, that the enemies have available, once you hit 50% of the threshold of their hit points, they begun, uh, begin to lose half of their AP. Um, 75 uh, reduces it to only 25% of their AP and at some point they can't move at all. It is a very, very effective way of dealing with enemies, but it requires you to somewhat uh, focus on that. So having multiple of the neuralizers and uh, neuralized pistols will be helpful. Honorable mentions in this regard uh, for pistols uh, would certainly be uh, the Iron Fury pistol, which is the only really decent shredding pistol uh, for one AP uh, utilization and for melee weapons I would want to hi uh, highlight Marduk's Fist which is the normal Warhammer from Anu. The stun has or uh, the shock behind it has saved me more than once. You can actually move in and the enemy uh, loses three out of their four uh, action points if it is not an absolute monster uh, in terms of its uh, hit points. So that uh, brings us to two snipers. Snipers are proficient with sniper rifles and handguns. We've already covered handguns, nothing more to add, but sniper rifles are one of the best early, mid and late game weapons as they are incredibly precise and therefore they can be used to take out vital parts of the opponent. And no, no other weapon does that better than the scorpion. It is the ancient um, sniper, which for 50 of each of the resources really packs a punch. It also does not require ammunition as all of uh, the ancient weapons and is all around just an absolutely fantastic sniper. Uh, this really is the next level of weapon craft once you are there. However, there are a couple of honorable mentions until you get there. Number one is the Pythagoras, which is the Sinhydran weapon. You can already see that weapons uh, which are medium or long range typically are best catered by the Sinhydran weapons. 
and um, I would um, do you a disservice if I wouldn't at least call out uh, the Athena NS2, which is the paralyzation weapon for the same reasons as I just mentioned. This is just stacking more paral uh, paralysis onto uh, the enemy and 16 paralysis is nothing to sleep at. With quick shot and two shots of that sniper, you can actually take out an entire enemy by itself, letting it uh, s uh, sit there. Uh, nicely and ready to be captured. Moving on to two technicians, uh, which really are uh, proficient with PDWs, robotic arms and turrets. The robotic arms are a no-brainer. They are absolutely strong. Use them whenever possible. For the PDWs, I would go with the Gordon Eye, uh, which is an, a very accurate or relatively accurate for PDWs. Uh, mm, uh, PDW for one uh, AP you're getting a truckload of damage 160 damage for one AP is nothing to sleep up at and it will give you the necessary uh, fighting power whenever needed for the turrets I am split between the standard turret which is the watcher and the laser turret both of them have their advantages and disadvantages so they are definitely both serviceable I use the laser uh, turret typically for damage if I have enough shredding if I do not have enough shredding I go with the watcher AT as it is mainly for shredding uh, purpose if you get close enough and have a decent position these turrets can absolutely go to town um, Fun fact, if you do have multiple uh, technicians, uh, remote control actually allows you to access all of the turrets so you can very much uh, focus in on the one turret that is best placed and then completely obliterate the enemies. So turrets, very strong. Moving on to priests and priests are really only proficient with viral weapons. I'm personally not the biggest fan of viral weapons, but if you do have a priest and you can't take other weapons, I would tell you go for the uh, subjugator. Uh, the subjugator at least uh, will help the priest to hit. It is um, a decent weapon. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, their alternative, the Redeemer, mostly because it doesn't hit often enough to actually do something meaningful. Once uh, the subjugator hits larger targets, for uh, at least once or twice uh, typically their willpower will be drained quite substantially and then they be uh, become chain feared it's also a great setup to afterwards use and use panic or mind control as lower willpower for them really means that they are easier targets to pick on viral weapons not the best but if you need to choose one i would go with a subjugator Finally, moving on to the infiltrators who are proficient with spider drones and crossbows. Starting with spider drones, one of uh, the weapons that I underestimated at the beginning. I actually fell in love with them, specifically with the ability to deploy three spider drones at once. Great action economy. Uh, the spider drones themselves, if uh, you can steer them, can remove armor. They are remote controllable, which means that technicians can actually immediately access them and move them in the right direction. And they act as mimic beacons or mini mimic beacons. So whenever you feel out of position, these guys can be deployed to the front line and deflect a little bit of the aggression. So they are actually quite good. As for crossbows, the only noticeable good crossbow is the crystal crossbow, which is the ancient weapon for 75 living crystals. It's moderately priced. The damage isn't that hot, but it has a good uh, piercing ability and is um, moderately uh, accurate. It overcomes the biggest uh, problem of all of the crossbows, which is low ammunition count as it has unlimited ammunition. So that's really it. That was the last uh, weapon. Uh, uh, there are a couple of special weapons that I would recommend to take a look at. For instance, the mounted laser that you can get later in the game. Absolute uh, powerful weapon. Uh, so I should mention that as well as a viable option. But generally speaking, these are the best in class uh, weapon, uh, best in slot of weapons for your classes and should give you an easy time to rock the battlefield. Let me know if I missed any of your favorite weapons and have a great one. See you soon and try sniping that like button.
拜。